resident pest control for the ethanol plant. Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief, trusted, tested, true. Good morning, everybody. So I didn't drive a car here. I drove a semi-truck. Grant and I got you guys a tour of an ethanol plant. So we're still harvesting today, so we're going to make this kind of brief, but we're just going to go over a couple big points because ethanol is a huge part of Grant and I's operation. It's where all, essentially all of our corn gets hauled is to one ethanol plant or another. And today we are at Chief's Ethanol Plant. This is where Grant and I have been hauling for the past couple days. And so we're just gonna sneak in a quick little tour. Uh, behind me is the heartbeat of the whole operation. Back here is essentially a glorified hot water heater is what they told to me. But essentially steam is what powers this whole place. They can't do anything without the heat from the steam. Look at, look at all this, Grant, the brains of the operation. After we saw the brains of the operation in the computer control room, we moved on to the prep area. And we can't go in there because that would be extremely dangerous. That is where all of the corn that we're bringing in and everybody else bringing in is getting ground up into a super, super, super fine powder. And then that steam that was being created that we saw at the very beginning, that's being used to heat up all that powder to like 180, 190 degrees. And then we're moving on to the fermentation process. Some enzymes are added to break down the starch in the corn. And then over across about 60 hours, the fine powder mash is fermented in these big tanks behind me. Look at all of these electric motors. Kidding me? The ethanol plant has a resident cat. Oh, hello, waffles. Oh my word. <clears throat> yeah, he's at his house. He's pest control. No way. <laughs> waffles, the five-fingered cat. <gasps> That's so weird. <laughs> resident pest control for the ethanol plant. This particular location is the oldest ethanol plant in Nebraska and the longest running dry mill ethanol production plant in the United States, as far as I know. Check that out. It's so soupy. From this high up, it looks like a toy you would play with in the sand. That's so cool. There's a truck pulling in to get loaded. After the continuous fermentation process, I had to write the next steps down. And they, I, they really simplified it down for me. It's still a lot. So after the fermentation, the yeast breaks the sugar down into CO2 and ethanol. But the ethanol is still mixed in with that corn mixture. And so that solid mixture, they call that beer. At that stage, it's roughly 16% ethanol. That is heated again and goes into a beer column, is what they call it. And then the corn solids and water are starting to begin to be split off in that column. Then it moves on to a rectifying column and that's just further separating the ethanol away from the water and the solids. At that point, it's about 190 proof. Then it goes into a molecular sieve don't ask me what that is. That's for the engineers to know. That is where the rest of the water is stripped out. And at that point, it's 199 proof. The water mixture goes through, separates all the solid, and then the water gets dehydrated. And that's what is turned into the corn syrup. And then the rest of it, what's left over is this that we're looking at right down here. So this plant is pumping out corn syrup, distiller's cornmeal, wet feed, dry feed, ethanol, and alcohol. How crazy is that? This is my first time wearing a hard hat. Looks pretty good on you. <laughs> the plant was designed for 10 million gallons a year, and now they do 75 million gallons a year. That's a lot of ethanol.
Something really interesting and kind of unique to this ethanol plant is they have two separate rail lines by Burlington Northern and Union Pacific. All right, you guys, that was just plain cool. It's a couple days later. I was editing the ethanol plant video and I was like, you know what? If we're gonna do the ethanol plant, we need to go to the corn plant first because some of you might be asking yourself, so why are they doing all this just to make some gasoline? There's a lot more to the story. I'm gonna take you guys back to high school plant biology here for a moment. So photosynthesis is how a plant makes its own energy. The plant takes in CO2 from the air, water, from its roots and sunlight from the leaves grows up and produces this ear and this is pretty much just a battery and this battery can be used in all sorts of ways so we harvest this we grab all the seeds and you could either feed this to cows or you can feed this to yeast in the ethanol plant and that yeast produces ethanol so if you didn't know this whole plant is basically made up of carbon and this carbon came from the air. The only thing it gets from the dirt is nitrogen, potassium, and phosphate, which we put there because we've been farming this land for a hundred years, a little over a hundred years now, and we're still getting these excellent yields. Pretty much this entire plant's mass came from the air. So when we take this corn into the ethanol plant to get processed and made into ethanol, that ethanol gets put into your fuel tank. And then when you drive by my cornfield burning that ethanol, it's releasing CO2 that my plants are gonna take up next year. And so it's just a carbon cycle. So essentially our cornfield is a giant solar panel with no wires. And it just produces a bunch of little batteries, also known as corn seeds, Corn makes such a good power source because it's relatively easy to grow and easy to transport, easy to harvest. Around here, we just have to make ethanol for you guys to use in your cars. And as opposed to using fossil fuels, which we still use, you know, most ethanol is 10%, 15%, or there's E85, which is usually cheaper at the pump. But if you're using fossil fuels, you're just bringing up oil from deep underground where it's been for a long, long time. And that carbon has been trapped in there, but the energy is also trapped in there. So when you're releasing that energy, you're also releasing carbon in the air that wasn't in the atmosphere previously. But ethanol is that carbon was in the air earlier this year and we have put it in the plant and then we put it in your gas tank. You released it when you drove by, but then my corn plant's just gonna suck it up again. So it's a, it's a big energy cycle. That's why ethanol is marketed as a green or renewable fuel. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. I love getting the opportunity to explore different sectors of agriculture, parts of my job that I interact with every day but are still off the farm. I just think it's really cool to get to loop you guys in on the process. I get to show you farming from the planting to the watering, to the harvesting, to the storing, but this is a huge part of agriculture. So I just wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone at Chief, not only for sponsoring the channel and being big supporters of myself and agriculture, but also just being some of the nicest people and providing just a really great tour for myself. And then also you guys as the viewing audience. I really love Chief. Like I said, I only bring on sponsors who I just really support as a company. And I think you guys should too. And they have so many great sectors to their business as you see from the intro. Okay, that was a great tour, but it is time for me to get back to the field. So I hope you guys learned something new today. I know I did, and we will see you in the next one. Bye!